Hey guys, I'm Ofra and welcome back to my channel. So today's video will be on introducing text and code embeddings which OpenAI endpoints are providing us with and trust me, it's pretty powerful. And I will let you know why it is powerful because I will showcase a demo app which I built using Streamlit and this OpenAI embeddings and you will see it does the semantic search job pretty well. So let's first see what is this embedding about. So if I just quickly go to this documentation of OpenAI, embeddings are nothing but the measure of relatedness between two text strings and it just try to understand how related two strings are. Uh, it can be useful for searching or clustering, recommendation, the classification, all this purpose embeddings are pretty powerful. The, what are the models which OpenAI is providing? If I just go back here, uh, it's providing the GPT-3. Under GPT-3, this uh, takes Da Vinci, which is one of the most capable one and the most latest one, which we have discussed in a previous video as well. The text query, which is also pretty good. The Babbage, the other. So in this video, if you go through, you'll see I will be using the text other for semantic search. And uh, why other? Because it's not as expensive as the other one. So let's quickly go to the pricing section. And if you see, compared to other, the Da Vinci is 0.02, whereas text other is 0.04. Uh, per 1k token so it's comparatively cheaper to any other models and it's not the best or it, it is not the most powerful one but it is the most fastest one and i think for this kind of automation task or a daily life automation task uh, text other does the job pretty well now if i go to what is text other capable of as i said before it's good for parsing simple classification address correction keywords i mean these are what which we need for daily jobs right and this is something which we can actually build on and and scale up our app at the end of the day and takes other does this job with very less amount of money but it's very fast it does this job so why not leverage text other model out here and try to build something which is very easy to build and let's see what i have built using it something very minimal which is called as notebook ai so basically i dumped all my notebooks uh, notes which i have taken all this time into a excel sheet I to get the vectorized form of it i did the embeddings out there which we'll do today as well try to build an app on the top of it I search something it will give me the context out of it so all these notes which i have taken all this time is dumped in a as a data format so let's search for nature and i press the run button and if you see all the context which is coming up is based on this particular keyword called nature and this nature plants is one of the scientific journal this one in the green is the relatedness because we tried to calculate the relatedness between two strings i'm just taking it from the previous context and i just press the run button again and let's see if we can get out the context based on the ps1 tetramer and we already see the the relatedness is much more higher it's around 0.85 and we see we get this uh, tetrameric uh, term the keyword out here also here we expect a keyword tetramer out here for the stem one tetramer and then we get something which is not so relevant probably the the third hit but let's take from this third hit this particular keyword pbs ps2 and photo system one and we paste it here and i press the run button and you see we get all this output which has the word pbs so that's pretty powerful i won't say that this is something not giving us our expected result this is giving us our expected result and the uh, other model is doing its job pretty nicely so how we build this kind of uh, ai or this notebook ai thing i'm pretty sure that's something which you guys will be interested about and for that i divided this whole tutorial video into two sections so the first section is about we, where we use google collab or jupyter notebook to vectorize our data so at this point i don't have so many data uh, this data is made up with only 20 or 25 rows still it's doing a good job use very simple straightforward syntax uh, the m embedding syntax which OpenAI provides and once we done this part we create the data which has the vectorized form of the embeddings in it and then we try to call that data and find our search term with it and in that use case we will use a uh, streamlit front end or the, this simple UI we will build while trying to have make a search engine out of it. I'm pretty sure that's something which you guys will be curious about so why not go to the coding session and let's start writing a few lines of code together. Let me quickly walk you through the code which I've written in order to perform these embeddings in our data which you already have. So first part is about installing the OpenAI and the Pandas since it's already installed in my computer showing the requirements are already satisfied. Once we 
successfully install it the next part is importing the modules the modules which we need to import are the pandas which we just installed now the open ai which we will use for the api keys and all the other stuff that's why we need to import the open ai and also the most important module out here is the get embedding the module which will import from openai.embedding utils so this model will help us to vectorize our data that's pretty crucial out here so we run this part as well so once we finish this part show you the data which we'll be using so it's more about uh, the data which already i have just used one column okay so we don't need to inspect or uh, tweak with the data much it's very straightforward so i i have my data already uploaded here notes dot xls so as you can see it's a notes only one column with a lot of stuff dumped out here but it has only 22 rows that's pretty less okay i i would rather go for more amount of rows but unfortunately i was pretty lazy to dump all the notes which i have all this time so it suggests that we go for a data which is much larger in size nevertheless uh, we just uh, create the embeddings so at the top of it but First, let's load the data. Okay, we just use uh, pandas dot read Excel sheet because it's in the Excel format. You can also use CSV file also. So you can just use read CSV. So it's basically pretty straightforward. I think it's it's read uh, CSV like this. That's it. Once we do this part, uh, we can just dump our data out here. So it's already loaded now. And the next part is we need to insert our OpenAI API key. If you have been in my channel before, as uh, well, I have described how we can actually get the OpenAI API keys. If you have the account in OpenAI, you just go to uh, view API keys and you create a new key and you immediately copy that and you just need to paste it once we get the input box. So for that, we need to either have a configuration key separately or a secret file or something called this where we'll use the get pass module and we'll get a space where we can just input our secret key so i'll just quickly go and generate a new secret out here i copy this part and i will paste it here if you see how did i paste it and we have entered our open ai api secret key so once this part is done now we can use any model which open ai api offered us right so we'll use the text embedding other o2 which we discussed all this time it's the fastest one it's much more uh, cheapest one and why not use this so we will use this embedding model and we will also try to perform this get embedding function we'll try this get embedding function on each and every rows so if you see this uh, particular file here here every row needs to get embedded needs to get vectorized for that we use this particular function called lambda so it's performing in each and every row it's iterating through each and every rows and as a result we get this vectorized form for every rows in one line of command otherwise you can just loop over them perform it that's also pretty good it's pretty straightforward once this part is done we save it as notes embedding.csv that's all we need out here with this jupyter notebook or sorry google collab and once we have this we once we run this part i'm not running it again because it will again charge me but once you run this part we'll create a file with notes and embedding if you see it's it's a particular one row of notes having so many uh, vectorized tokens and this is something which the model will leverage it's not for us we won't understand what he's trying to say but the model will use that part so that's all from this part where we try to create this uh, notes embedding.csv file once we create this we can go to the next part where we'll create the uh, create the ui that will be very straightforward if you're in my channel you have seen a lot of streamlit videos and we have created a streamlit bot before we won't use a bot today but we'll use a very simple input box where we'll just dump with some text and then we can get this we can connect with this embeddings Let's go to the implementation of this ui so once we have this vectorized from our data which we discussed in the previous section and the next part will be to create the ui which we we plan to make this notebook ai which we plan to make and it's very easy to make with streamlit streamlit is a python front and framework which is very easy to deploy any web apps and that's something which i have made a lot of videos in my channel please check them out it's very easy to install using pip command pip install streamlit so you need to make a folder and have a python file called app.py as i did out here you can name it as you want but it needs to end with .py and once you have that you can start writing your code so one of the things which we need to import is the streamlit open ai and also other dependencies so i'll just copy and paste the code in my github repository you can find all the code here also i will put in the description box the link of this particular url 
few of the packages which are installed i will discuss about it and few lines which we need in order to uh, make this web app we'll also do that so first thing we have the pandas library we need this pandas library to read this csv file Next, we need the NumPy because we'll convert our embeddings to a NumPy format, NumPy array format. We need the Streamlit in order to create the web app, OpenAI for its uh, OpenAI API keys, and we also need the OpenAI embedding. Utils, this is the most important part. We need the module get embedding, which we used before also, this time for the search term, which we'll put it in, and also the cosine similarity in order to find the similarities between the search term and our data. The first line which we wrote out here is the typical streamlit syntax called st.title so let me show you how the app looks like okay we'll go line by line and we'll see how the app looks like so what i will do is i will just comment until this part of the code and we will go in this particular place and it's already served in the local host streamlit uh, run and out here my uh, script's name is app.py so that's all you need to write terminal once you do this it's enough for the app to run in the local host so this text input will create a text input widget which will allow our user to put its his or her own open api key so i'll just paste it here if you see it's, it's not showing it because uh, any of the how the api key looks like until i press this uh, it's because the type is password so once we have the secret key all we need to do is we just assign them so basically we don't need this function we can also store it in a session state but that's not critical for our purpose so we can just need to use this particular command openai.api key and we pass it as the secret the user's secret which will be the output from here so one of the most critical thing of the app is about loading our data i use the pandas.read csv and i explicitly write the path of my file which is the node embedding to csv that what we made all this time the embeddings with the vectorized form we'll just load that how we can see how the data frame looks like we just need to write st dot data frame and we dump our uh, variable which we will assign to so i say df equal to load data and then the output we assign it here now let's see how our output looks like so if you see that this is the output this is a typical excel sheet which we created before and now i will just comment this part so next we come to the main function which we use in order to find the similarities between our uh, search text and also the data frame which we have created right for that we write this few lines of code if you see the purpose of this function the search notebook function is the to find the most similar nodes in the data frame df which we will give as an argument which is basically our loaded data from our csv file and to search the term which will be passed by the user and we will try to find the similarity between them and we'll compute the model will compute it and give us throw us the result out of it okay so the re return will be a pandas data frame and that's all we need for our whole purpose to get the similar keyword so let's go step by step what it is doing so first we try to convert the embeddings in the embedding column to a numpy array so we already have a uh, data frame where the embedding column is present as you can see here things are converted into a numpy array and then we try to get the embeddings of the search embeddings which the user will provide so while speaking about that we can actually create our search box so if i just go here now and this is the search box which we'll create it's again another text input but here we don't use the password or the type because we don't need to hide our uh, search box right so that's why we don't hide it so this will be the search input which we'll pass into our particular function and this particular line what it does it tries to get the embedding of the search term as we did before for our real data sets we tried to create the embeddings for each and every rows in the data frame similarly for this search term we'll create the embedding using the engine text embedding other o2 that's all and once this is done we'll try to compute the similarities between the search term and our data and we will use the particular module called cosine similarity which we already imported and in that way we'll get a particular column called the similarity where we'll dump all the data right that's very simple that's all we need and we'll just later we'll try to sort the values that's all this part of the line is doing it so that we see the one which is the highest similarity at the top that's a very trivial uh, pandas usage and then we just try to print the result or we get the result out of it right even this part of the line is not required so now we have a new text box where the user can input anything out there like right? uh, any query he or she wants to get 
So once that input box is done, we press enter, it will start the next part of the code, right? So let's see like, you know, if I just press like this and I press enter and I just give an output to this search term, you will see the search term will come up. This is a search term, but we won't use it like that. What we will do is we'll feed this search term in this particular uh, function, what we wrote all the, or we discussed all this time, the search notebook, right? But before we uh, put it, dump it into our function, we also need to make some checks. So what we can do instead of making a check, we can make a search button, which will be, oh, we get this error because I just uncommented this part. So we will create this particular search button, which will help us to run our model. And once someone clicks this, they will see whatever the it is hiding behind it. Okay, it will start running it. And the next part will be this few lines of code. Let's see what these lines of code speaks about, right? So the first thing is if there is a search term. So basically if there is, there, if it's empty, this won't work, okay? Only if there is a, a search term, then there will be this button which will be generated, right? We can actually write it in this way. If there is a search term, we generate this button, then we don't need to write this line of code. So whenever there is a search term, the, this button is generated. Perfect. So this way we, we make sure that there is some uh, search term out there in this input widget. So once that input widget is there, the button will show up. And the next part is we just feed in all these arguments inside this search notebook, which we discussed all this time. So the first thing is the data. So basically it's our DF, which we loaded the, the, as a DF, if I'm not wrong, the variable. So it's just we just dump it here. And we also dump the search term because this will be uh, again going through this particular function of get embedding. And the next term is how many outputs we want. We can have five outputs, like uh, the first five similarities we can have. And also we can print it. It doesn't matter. This function doesn't require that. And the next part is whatever we get the output. I just want to you know iterate through the rows and have a very nice output of it. So we, we write something called PBS, PS2, PS1. We searched with this in the beginning of this uh, video and we got a very nice result. And now if I just press the run button, it gave me each and every, gave me five one if you see now, five of the most similar ones. And it shows it's pretty accurate. It shows me all the context of that particular search term. That's pretty cool, right? I mean, that's something which we're hoping for. And we can just change to something else. Let's say we go to mega complexes. I don't know if this will work or not. So we just run it like this. And let's see, uh, first thing which we get, I don't see any mega complex out here. But from the next one, we start to get this mega complex. Maybe our model needs to be much more refined. In that way, we can get a better uh, output or the result out of it. So as you can see, with just few lines of code, I could generate this notebook AI assistant and I can just search for any queries. Let's say we search for a Tetram or a PS1 and we get the output out of it. And that's something, a pretty cool semantic search engine, which helps us to get the context of our text, which you're looking for. And that's something like a notebook, which we don't need to waste so much time to go through it. Our AI will do the part for us. So I hope you guys enjoyed this particular video where we spoke about the embeddings which OpenAI offers us. Also the semantic searches which OpenAI helps us to scrap through any notebooks or any uh, applications or any particular text which you will feed into it. And that will be very powerful when we leverage or scale this up, this particular uh, web app. And I hope you guys will try different ways out. And I hope you guys will write down in the comment section what you guys think about this and what are different approaches you can take. And I'll be happy to make more videos on this, on OpenAI implementations and their APIs. So please uh, subscribe to my channel, share this video and give a thumbs up to this video. It will be great to receive feedback from you all. Cheers.